Welcome back to Pirate Studios. Today we're going to look at a cheap solution to record with Amp Sims and playing live with Amp Sims. Hit it. So, I recently had a subscriber ask me about. <clears throat> Amp Sims and what all that they uh, would need as far as uh, he said uh, Scarlet Focus Ride or something and he just meant interface in general and I thought well I was already planning on uh, doing a video on the laptop setup uh, for a live rig so this is kind of going to be that and uh, it's just going to be a cheap setup in general to uh, that I personally bought myself to record drums kind of on the go uh, as well as playing amp sims through so i bought this is what i bought is i bought this lenovo thinkpad um i wish it had hdmi out it does not so it does have this old the old style you could get an adapter and it should I, i've never used it but it should go to a tv because that's one thing I do got to say. It will get the job done. But it is a pain having to record with small monitors. That's why I like this giant freaking, I think this is a 50 or 55. Somebody gave it to me. A friend of mine gave it to me. So that's what I like to use. Um, so I've got, I'm going to leave links to all this stuff for the setup. But um, I'm going to show you, and you, and I, I saw another alternative to this uh, laptop that's a little bit cheaper than what I paid. So let's go over to, this is the laptop. This is my laptop. This is what I paid. I paid $239. I think, um, I don't know, I, I think, I don't know if I can look at my invoice for exactly what I said but for exactly what I paid for. Um, but I, in my opinion, I think you need at least 16 gigs of RAM to record um, eight channels um, for drums. So that's what I was going for, because my, I just built a new PC, but my old PC, it was only 16 gigs of RAM. <coughs> and it handled, it handled 16 uh, channels. So um, I figure um, 16 gigs of RAM is probably the, the least for drums. Now guitar, you might be able to get away with 8 gigs of RAM if you're just going to record guitar and bass and vocals. But um, if you want to just go ahead and get 16, just say better safe than sorry. It's probably a good idea. This comes with Windows. Um, so it's, it's going to come with Windows, so you don't have to buy Windows. Um, I also suggest getting one. This is why I selected, why I got this laptop, because it's SSD. The main hard drive is a solid state drive, so it's going to be faster. Um, it's, it says renewed. Um, it's it's because it's. It was probably barely used, and they probably just wiped it out and started fresh, and resold. I mean, it's in great shape. Um, I saw one earlier when I was looking, though, and it was cheaper than this, and it only had, like I said, um, I think it still had 16 gigs of RAM, but the, the SSD, the hard drive, was only 256 gigs. It wasn't 500 like this is. You don't really, 500 to me, I mean, it's not even enough. I mean, because you got to bring in you know, extra storage. Um, but your main hard drive is where your OS is and it takes a lot on its own. And uh, so the OS as in Windows. So anyway, here's the laptop. Uh, I'm gonna demonstrate on the Amp Sim, on a Amp Sim, a really cheap, great Amp Sim that will allow you to do MIDI and uh, you can play live with it and you can um, record like I said you can record drums on, on anyway okay so 
the next thing I would definitely recommend is getting a trackball. Um, I've got this trackball. This is the exact one that I bought. This scroll, it's got a scroll wheel here. And I love it. Um, it's killer. It's especially, I can't, I can't go without it. I can't go without it when it comes to recording. I've got to have a scroll wheel when I'm recording because I, I, it helps me to maneuver and I'm going to, I'm going to kick up Reaper here and hopefully it won't take long, but I like it. It, I can hold control and use my scroll wheel and it'll zoom. You can do it with a mouse too, but I just don't like to have to move and all that crap. I like having full control with my fingers instead of having to move the whole stupid mouse. That's, that's, that's stupid to me. Um, now the next thing you're going to need, which I didn't have it grabbed, so The next thing you're going to need is the cheapest thing I could find is an interface. This is like 40 bucks. <clears throat> I did a review on this already and I'll link it in the description so you can check out the, the video. Give it a like. And if you like this video and if this video is help, helpful, please like it and please uh, consider subscribing. Um, it really helps me out so you can get me out of my terrible now it's not a terrible job, but so you can get me out of the regular work, working job, so I can do what I love. Um, so this is the cheapest thing I could find. It's got um, phantom power, if you want to use uh, use a condenser microphone. And so this is a combo. This is a this is an XLR, which is a microphone cable, or you can plug a quarter inch into it, and then it has a second quarter inch input right here, and it's, they each got their own volumes. And then there's the output. The output is up front for a headphone jack. That would be the thing I was going to say. It's got outputs back here too, RCAs. And um, when I was, I, I just used the, the output, but if you could go, you could use these and go into your stereo. A stereo is something you're probably going to want to have. If not, you can use your head, you can use some headphones. You know, unfortunately it's got to be wired. But uh, this little thing, uh, works just fine for uh, it it only does 16 bit which I don't even I don't even personally know the the difference all between the bit rates um, there's 16 and 24 bit is what I export everything at and a lot of um, a lot of people use 24 bit this the drivers that you get for this only allow you to do 16 bit. Now, the company, Behringer, have a video on this and this interface too. This one's $80. This one's a little bit more, but it has a better preamp in it, so I bought it. But it's the same drivers. They, they suggest getting the ACO for all driver, ASIO for all driver to run these, but they don't work. Where I have done everything I possibly can think of and troubleshooted and searched all over YouTube and searched all over Google. I cannot find the answer. It seems to me that they are wrong. That window, as far as Windows, I don't know about Mac, but as far as Windows, these interfaces won't even power up at all when you plug them in with the ACO for all driver, no matter what you do. It will never even power on. So if it doesn't ever power on, Windows isn't ever gonna see it. And therefore, ACO for all will never see it. So the only driver that will work is the driver that I will put in the description. And it, it's a, I think it's an older driver I found. It's a 64-bit, um, which is, it, you should be running 64-bit Windows. Um, if you're running Windows, the I'll leave the in the description the driver for the 64 bit windows driver and um, it works it, it's gonna have you unplug and plug plug in while it's installing and then it will power on and work um, so the two bad things about this um, one is 
when you go past noon, it starts these these preamps start to have noise. And then the other thing is because we're having to use that driver, I don't know if anybody else is having this trouble, but my old computer and my new computer, both, and that new interface using that driver, they all wind up getting random freaking latency crack and glitch noises. It's not very often. So you could definitely play play through a whole song. And I'm using my audio through it right now. So if we don't hear any of that through this whole video, then we'll know that's a pretty good tip. <laughs> so um, yeah, other than that, it's, it's good. But this is the cheapest alternative. This is the cheapest thing I can find. So got your laptop, got your internet. The next thing you need is a option depending on what you want to do. Now the amp sim we're going to use has a standalone mode, which you don't need an audio works, a digital audio workstation. But if you want to record, um, you do need a DAW and I suggest Reaper. I about Reaper is the best DAW I've ever used. When I started playing, guitar I soon after started writing and I got into recording and the very first program I ever had was Cakewalk Sonar 5 and then later I uh, upgraded and went to Cubase LE and um, Reaper is like it's kind of a it's, it's a lot like both of those programs so it was really easy for me to learn and the best thing about this is that it's 60 bucks and that is super cheap and if you if you've got your if you've already purchased your laptop and your interface and you want to get going and you don't have any more money yet but you don't want to wait you can download reaper and there the trial never ends now please if don't do that forever Please support the company because they're a great company and they're great people and um, <clears throat> it's just a great it's just a great program so anyway so the next thing that you're probably gonna want if you're gonna use this live is you're probably gonna want some kind of foot switch because you want to be able to go from clean to distortion and then maybe a lead channel um, I bought this. This is a foot switch, and it's mid, it's a MIDI. It's a Mvov chocolate, and uh, let's, let's check out. I have a link here, and I'll leave the link for this in the description. It's thirty thirty three ninety nine. You know? Super cheap. Now the problem with this is that it's like it's made in China. China and doesn't come with a manual. So it's a pain in the, it's a pain in the butt to learn. <clears throat> and it says that it's Bluetooth wireless, but it's, I don't know how you hook it up via Bluetooth to your computer. As far as I've only seen, I have seen that the Bluetooth is to communicate with the app for the app to communicate with it. So, um, if we go to, like I said, I'll leave a link to that, but if we go to Google and what the app is called, it's called CubeSuit. Cube. Yeah, so, and Huvave. There it is right there. Best thing to, what I would suggest is take a picture of that and it will put it on your phone because if you try to search it on the Play Store or whatever, you may not, you may not find it. I don't know. I couldn't find it. <laughs> so anyway, it's gonna look like this. You're gonna open it. It's gonna look like that. The the icon. The icon is right there, next to Slack screen. And if. Uh, you're gonna turn that on. That's gonna be red blinking until it connects. Then it's gonna turn blue. And then it's scanning. Oh, okay. 
There it is. It says split switch. I have a video on this too, and I'm gonna do some more videos on this. Um, this this also does take an expression pedal, which I have gotten to work uh, with, a, which I have a video on how to get that to work. But it's a little bit different. You firmware? No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do the firmware. Right now. So you want what you want to do is scroll down right here. If my phone would go. What you want to do is scroll right here until you get to advanced custom mode. That's where you want that. And I literally haven't done anything. But I put it there. Sometimes it likes to disconnect. You get what you pay for. IK Multimedia has a more expensive MIDI controller, MIDI foot switch that you can use. But it's like over 100 bucks. So um, the amp we're going to use that I suggest there, there's three or four. But the company is Audio Assault. Um, this is the crown. This is the one that we're going to look at today. Pretty much what it is, is any amp sim that they have that has an EX is going to work. It's going to have MIDI. Now, they're, um, they're working on a new amp sim. They have a couple betas that, that are out on it called Amp Locker. And they are going to transfer to that uh, all their standalone amps that you used to be able to. Well, you still can, but you can buy that are just single amps. They're now going to all wind up transferring over to one plugin. You can access all the amps in one area. Right now, you can still get these old amps, older amps. And this is the crown. It's it is a. It says three channel. It's just like it says it's a mesa boogie triple crown 100 watt head and cap uh, half stack it's ten dollars sometimes you can get them for seven dollars their stuff is killer so you can download that and i'm going to show you how this works so we want to open up a regular channel here let's make sure that we okay we do we'll make sure we got audio here we want to open up our regular channel for that we're going to run our guitar on and in this case i have have my guitar running in too i'm not going to arm it yet that's the arm button if you don't know the turn right And then <clears throat> you want to open a second channel, but you want to make it a MIDI channel. And in Reaper, if you want it to see your foot switch, you've got to go, first you want to, um, once it's up and running, you want to go up here to, you can click right here or control P, control P will also, control P, which is preference. And you're just going to go to the second option under audio and you're going to go to MIDI devices and then it should say USB MIDI and you're going to click enable on both of those and that will automatically be let Reaper timestamp you want to say okay and then you want to apply and say okay Woo. this has to be armed or it won't work gonna go right here and say MIDI and there there's the MIDI you just turn on just put it on all channels that's fine now you have like I was trying to, like I was trying to say this has to be armed or it won't work you want to take and you just want to left click on um, send well let's here let's open this first <clears throat> here's the amp I'm gonna turn that off so, we don't, so we're not hearing noises right now and you want to okay so you want to left click right here on receive and send and hold it and you want to drag it over till it's over the amp and you see that little the little emblem there boom and you can just close that and what that's saying is it's going to send your MIDI signal from this channel to the amp to this channel 
and um, the reason you the reason you have to do it this way is because Reaper, and I don't think any dog does. I don't think you can have a MIDI channel and an input. You can't have a MIDI and an input going to one channel on in a in an audio workstation. You have to you have to send the signal, the MIDI signal. Okay. Now I've already got presets right here saved. I've got a clean and I've got the my rhythm and my lead chain. But what we want to do is we want to go to MIDI editor and I've got them here. And you want to say you can you can say add preset switch. Oh I added two, I didn't mean to. Can say add preset switch and you can select what preset you want and you're going to click learn and then you're going to select with your foot or your hand you're going to select what button you want so you want it to set it to so uh, i'm going to kill that one I'll clean learn i want it on that one and it's already going to be that so learn on rhythm my rhythm is two it, it, it made uh oh yeah okay I must not click okay so made this one when you're on that section when you're on that when you're on that uh, option on your phone advanced custom mode it, 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 it makes a zero and then that's going to be two and that's going to be three and if you this cc is the midi note that's just that's what midi note is number is for midi note I, that's the best way i can explain it anyway okay so that's the way that is now here's clean you can see that it's going to clean now if i want to go to my rhythm channel i press the second button and there's my rhythm and then my lead channel is my third button and there's my lead channel and it automatically changes everything to the way that I saved it so <clears throat> that's how you do that now if you was going to run this in standalone mode you would just do the same thing here in the editor you would do the same thing except you you, you don't have to uh, you don't have to set up a track because you don't have to send your MIDI channel to it because you're not in you're not in a in a recording program. So let's hook this up. So we want to turn this on and there's the sound and I'm gonna mute my mic just so we don't have interference here. Yeah, so it's pretty awesome. Um, there's not really any latency as far as changing over. There's just a little bit, but it's it's manageable. If you were going to do this, if you were going to use it live, so that's um, you've got a pedal board, which you don't need a gate during. Yeah, you don't you don't need a gate when you're using clean. You don't really need any any of these. You, I guess you could use the CQ pedal if you wanted to. And then uh, there's my amp. And you can change the, tube, the tubes. I don't hear much of a difference. Got a cab section. 
comes with three different cabs. Um, I'll let you hear it. Anyway, so yeah, um, it's pretty awesome, especially for 10 bucks. And this is no special pickup, it's just the standard cheap stock pickup that comes with these old Washburn guitars. And I like jump guitars because they stay in tune. And I don't know, it's not even Grover tuners. Sounds great. I love the single cool. I don't even need the middle pickup, really. I like single cool for clean. And a humbugger for distortion. That's pretty much it. Um, so under 500 bucks, you can have a have a live rig and a uh, mobile rig to record. Um, now, if you was gonna play live, you're probably like many other struggling musicians around the country and uh, playing in some crap hole bars. And, holes in the walls and um, they may not even have inner systems they may only have some speakers for your vocal mic to go through and nothing else and then in that case you know you may need to buy probably need to buy an amp and it would be cheaper than all of this anyway a real amp um, but uh, you know if they had an input on the PA you could run this out into the PA, you wouldn't have, unless you had a monitor up front, you're not going to be able to hear it unless, except for what you hear in the monitors up, you know, above the stage and all that. But, uh, if you like a lot of, a lot of places, venues, and a lot of bands and stuff, um, are going to in-ears, and they don't, they don't even have real amps on stage anymore, they don't even have real cabinets on stage anymore, so you could just Go your little laptop, like I, I did at some practices, output into whatever inner system they got, and they can adjust you however they want in their, on their little tablet or whatever, and uh, in their sound system. And you got a, your headphones, so you can hear everybody. You can hear your guitar. And then you can tweak whatever you need to inside your own stuff, inside your own laptop, too. And, uh, yeah. So the laptop... Uh, battery is typical just like any other battery you never know when the battery is going to take a crap so it comes with a power supply obviously I just keep it plugged in all the time when I'm using it so I don't have to worry about it dying on me anyway if you like this video and if it was helpful please like and please subscribe to the channel please share this video I'd really appreciate it and check out the other videos all the links all this stuff's going to be in the description um, all the stuff so you can buy it the links to the review on this interface will be there a video on how to get a expression pedal so you can use a wah pedal or a whammy pedal um, on an amp sim running it just like the midi like i just did in this one i'll leave that in the description also if you want to get some free impulse responses tone tone matched impulse responses that i made I made some impulse responses of my amp and uh, I'll leave that. You can get that for free by joining my mailing list in the description. And my neural amp modeler of my amp is down there too. Anyway, thanks for stopping by and have a good one.